Welcome back, everyone. And once again, I'm Coach Spivey, joining my son, Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that subscribe button in this bottom right-hand corner. And also check us out at our website at fathersoninnovations.com so you don't miss out on any more of our amazing content and material. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our video today, which is Macromolecules 101. So let's do this. So first things first, what are macromolecules? And macromolecules are just simply molecules made from many smaller molecules. And the word macro literally means large. Then we take a look at polymerization. It's the process that builds macromolecules by combining smaller molecules together. And we take a look at the word monomers. Mono literally means one. And these are the smaller molecules that join together to form the polymers, where poly means many, which are the larger molecules. And I like to think of this as Legos. So if we take one Lego block, that would represent the monomers. But if we take many Lego blocks and combine them or put them together, that's gonna give you our polymers or our larger molecules. And the four major groups of macromolecules are going to be our carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So we'll go ahead and start off with our carbohydrates first. Carbohydrates or sugars are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a one-to-one -one ratio. So for example, we have C6, H12, O6, and notice that one to one ratio. And this is a simple sugar right here in the form of glucose. And also if we take a look, the monomers of carbohydrates are monosaccharides. Remember, mono literally means one. And then the polymers of carbohydrates are polysaccharides. And remember, we said this before, but poly literally means many. And then carbohydrates are the main source of energy for living things. So glucose, for example, is one of the sugars that is broken down to supply immediate energy for cell activities and functions. And then extra sugar is stored as starch, in which is a complex carbohydrate. And then some organisms, such as plants, use carbohydrates for structure and support, like cellulose, for example. So we take a look at these carbohydrates over here to the right. They include such things as rice, bread, and pasta. And then if we look at the structure of a carbohydrate, it has this hexagon shape or structure or the six-sided structure combined with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen molecules. Then let's take a look at what carbohydrates tend to do to young kids when they get a lot of them when they're young. Notice this girl is full of energy and she's running around because she has a lot of sugars or carbohydrates in it. Now let's take a look at our types of carbohydrates or sugars. And we have two types, which are simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. And monosaccharides are single sugar molecules, so they literally mean one sugar. And then glucose, galactose, and fructose are all examples of monosaccharides. Then we take a look at sucrose. It's a disaccharide because it has two simple sugars joined together. So we're literally saying two sugars. And if you look at these sugar molecules, you can tell that there are two sugar molecules right here, one and two. And then simple sugars are easily broken down and used by the body for quick energy, such as in candy, cakes, pies, and table sugar. Now this is what gives us that sugar rush or that quick energy rush, because remember these molecules are so easy to break down and use as ready energy for the body. On to complex carbohydrates, which are known as polysaccharides or many sugars combined together. So let's go ahead and look at this complex carbohydrate right here. Notice that there are many carbohydrates joined or bonded together. And that's what takes our body longer to digest these complex carbohydrates because there are so many bonds that must be broken down. And then glycogen is animal starch, which is a polysaccharide used in animals to help us regulate our blood sugar. And plants use cellulose for structure and support and store excess sugars as starch. And also complex carbohydrates, like we said earlier, take longer to break down and are released as energy by the body over a longer period of time. So some examples of complex carbohydrates would be bread, rice, pasta, and vegetables. So people that are marathon runners do this process or have this process called carb loading, which means that they're eating a lot of bread, rice, and pasta the night before they have a big marathon. And why do they do this? So they can have energy that can be slowly released by the body over time. Now let's take a look at our lipids, which are commonly known as fats. And our lipids are comprised largely of carbon and hydrogen atoms with small amounts of oxygen. 
and the monomer of building blocks for a lipid is when a glycerol combines with fatty acids. So here's, here's this glycerol group right here. And so I go ahead and write glycerol right here. And it combines with three fatty acids. So, and I'll go ahead and put Fa beside these fatty acids. And the polymers for a lipid are saturated and unsaturated fatty acids, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And lipids are primarily used to provide energy for cells, cell structure, and insulation. And they also help make up our cell membrane with the phospholipid bilayer. And lipids such as steroids are hormones that serve as chemical messengers. And lipids include fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Now let's dive deeper into our types of lipids or fats. And we'll start off with our saturated fatty acids. And they're a type of fat in which the fatty acid chains have all or mostly single bonds. And they tend to be solids at room temperature. So some examples of our saturated fatty acids include butter, dairy cream, cheese, and fatty meats like steak, pork, and chicken. So we look at our saturated fatty acid right here. Notice that these are single bond carbon bond chains. So if you notice, look at these carbon bonds right here. And in each one of them, there's a single bond going all the way across. Let's move on to our unsaturated fatty acids. And they're a fat in which there is at least one double bond in the fatty acid chain. And they tend to be liquids in room temperature. So some examples of our unsaturated fatty acids include olive oil, soybean oil, most nuts, and seeds. So we take a look, look at this chain right here, but notice that there's this double bond right here. And if we look at our saturated fatty acids, there are only single bonds over here, but in an unsaturated fatty acid, they contain at least one double bond. Now you also have polyunsaturated fatty acids, which means they contain multiple double bonds, which is hint by the word poly. And now let's take a look at our diagram below. And if you notice, we actually have three types of fats. We have trans fats, saturated fats, and then unsaturated fats. And unsaturated fats are often called the good fats because these are the fats that are recommended for us to take in our body. And remember, they include those polyunsaturated fatty acids and those monounsaturated fatty acids. And remember, poly stands for many, so it has many or multiple double bonds. And then that monounsaturated fat has that one double bond. And they can include such things as corn oil, soybean oil, and sunflower oil, also with the monounsaturated fats, olive oil, canola oil, and peanut oil. And then if we take a look, here are our saturated fats, and these are the fats that are considered bad for us, or we need to limit our amount of these fats because they can lead to high cholesterol and blockages in our arteries. And this would include vegetable fats such as coconut oil, palm oil, and beverages, and creamer. And then our animal fats would come from poultry skin, fatty meats, and butter. And then if you look here, here's our steak and here's those hot dogs. And then the worst type of fat is going to be that trans fat. So that's where, that's the type of fat that people get from fast food restaurants such as McDonald's, Checkers, or Burger King. And these are the hydrogenated vegetable oils of fast foods, cakes, pastries, chocolate, and deep fried food. So if you eat a lot of these, then you could end up with a situation like this. And last time I checked, nobody wants to have a situation like that. Now moving on to proteins, which are comprised of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And the monomers of proteins are amino acids. And each amino acid contains an amino group on one end and a carboxyl group on the other end. So let's take a look at that basic amino acid structure. So here's our amino group right here. And our amino group could be any number of amino acids. And then notice that it's connected with a side chain to this carboxyl group right here. And then uh, amino acids are joined together by peptide bonds. So here's that peptide bond sitting right here, which connects these two amino acids. And the polymers of proteins are polypeptides. And all the polypeptides are, are a bunch of amino acids connected together by these peptide bonds. And proteins have several functions, including controlling the rate of reactions, which are enzymes, and I'll make a video on that later. And then they also help regulate cell processes, and they form important cell structures, and they transport substances into and out of the cell. So if you have a cell membrane, it is made out of a phospholipid bilayer, but it also has proteins embedded in that bilayer that helps transport materials 
into and out of the cell. And then some are also used to help to fight disease. Now, when most people think of proteins, they only think of proteins as helping to build muscle. So I give an example of building muscle right here. Notice this is a very large muscular man that has built a lot of muscle using a lot of proteins. Now last, but certainly not the least, is our nucleic acids. And our nucleic acids are comprised of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And the monomers of nucleic acids are nucleotides. And each nucleotide contains a five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. So here's an example of our uh, nucleotide right here. And here's that phosphate group, here's that five carbon sugar, and then it has that nitrogenous base in the form of adenine. And our nucleic acids are used to store and transmit hereditary or genetic information. And the two kinds of nucleic acids are ribonucleic acid, otherwise known as RNA, which contains the sugar ribose, and deoxyribonucleic acid, or otherwise known as DNA, which contains the sugar deoxyribose. So I go ahead and underline those ribose and deoxyribose. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here's our components of our nucleic acid. So if you take a look at DNA, DNA contains thymine only while RNA contains uracil only. And notice both DNA and RNA both contain adenine, guanine, and cytosine. And then if you look at that sugar and phosphate group, we have that two deoxyribose right here. And then for DNA, and then for RNA, we have that ribose. And then both of them contain that phosphate group. Also, adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP, is a nucleotide that helps with taking in and transferring chemical energy. So now it's time for our macromolecules breakdown. And let's take a look at our carbohydrates first. And they're made out of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the monomer is going to be a simple sugar or a monosaccharide. And our polymer is going to be a polysaccharide. And so some examples of carbohydrates are going to be starch and cellulose. And here's the structure of that carbohydrate right here. And then moving on to our lipids, they're made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the monomer for them are going to be fatty acids and glycerol. The polymer is going to be a lipid. And then examples are going to be fats, oils, waxes, and also steroids. So here's our lipids right here. Notice here is that glycerol right here. And then here are our three fatty acid chains right here. And then moving on to our proteins, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then sometimes sulfur. And the monomer is going to be amino acids, and our polymer is going to be polypeptides. And then the example of proteins can be insulin. And then here's that protein right here. So here's that amino acid group right here, joined by this side chain. And then here is that carboxyl group right here as well. And then moving on to our nucleic acids, they're made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And the monomers are going to be nucleotides. And then the polymer is going to be a nucleic acid. And the examples would be DNA and RNA. So here's the nucleic acid right here structure. And then here's that phosphate group. Here's that five carbon sugar. And then here's that nitrogenous base. Now it's time for our check for understanding. And you're going to put it all together by using your newfound knowledge and notes on macromolecules to answer the following review. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was helpful over macromolecules. I'm Coach Spivey, sign off my son Jordan Spivey. And remember, if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. And also check us out at fathersoninnovations.com on our website. And like I always say, make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, and positive day. Peace.